we got a little project here that is really going to help protect the delicate electronics in today's locomotives. We've seen in the past that in some transformers in the post-war era, the circuit breakers don't really act fast enough to protect these electronics. Today we're going to build a box with fast acting circuit breakers that are good for any locomotive from any era and can be applied to any transformer. And this little project will be especially useful in the command environment with MTH's DCS system. The parts you're going to need for this project are a dual binding post available from Radio Shack. The part number is 274-718. You'll need eight of these. You'll also need a project box for this project. The one I found that works really good is this one from Radio Shack. The part number is 270-1803. Here's the key to the project. This is a fast acting circuit breaker. This fast acting circuit breaker is available from Newark Electronics. And the part number is W28-XQ1A-10. The manufacturer makes several different current ratings and the last two digits on the part number indicate how many amps that particular breaker is good for. For this project, we've chosen to use a 10 amp circuit breaker. If you don't already own this tool, this would be a nice one to put into your inventory. This is a spring-loaded center punch and it's perfect for this job. You need to make a mark on the plastic right in between those two ghost line ribs and right on your line where you're going to drill. This is perfect because it's very easy to hold and do. If you don't have that, you can use a regular center punch and a hammer to do the same thing. But I like this spring-loaded punch much better. It's very easy to see what you're doing and it makes a nice mark for the drill bit to follow. You need a 5 30 seconds drill bit, nice clean sharp one. Put it right on the mark that you made and slowly, because you're drilling plastic, drill into the plastic. Go very slowly with the bit speed. The reason why you want to run the bit slowly is you want to cut the plastic instead of melting it. When you take apart the binding posts, the posts go in like this and anchor on the inside. But you don't want to do that yet. You just want to trial fit this because we're going to drill some holes in the top and I want to use this as a base so that when I drill down, I don't run into the posts that are already mounted in the box. Now it's very critical that you locate these breakers exactly in the center of the box. So in order to determine that, we're going to measure the top of this box and find that it's exactly two and one half inches wide. So we're going to draw a line down the length of the top that is one and one quarter inches in from the edge. So we'll mark that here. And we'll come down and mark it here. Okay. And then we'll make it just a light scratch across the plastic at that exact point. There. Now in order to space the four of them evenly across the top, we'll put our square this way and line up with the holes we just drilled in the side. We can eyeball these. I'm looking straight down. I see the holes there. So I'll come up here and just put a little cross mark right there. We'll go down to the second set of holes. And put another one. And so on, all the way down the box until we get them all in. Okay, we have our marks. So We'll use the center punch to mark the exact location where the bit starts for these four holes. And the bit we're going to use, believe it or not, is a spade bit. And we need a 5 8 inch spade bit. Contrary to what you might think, this works very nice on plastics. We'll spot it right on our mark. And once again, go very slowly here. There's the first one. The second. The 
third. And a fourth. There's our nice holes ready to accept the breakers. The way the circuit breakers mount into a panel is on the back side right here are two locking tabs. See them here? They press in, spring loaded, and there's one on the other side right here. Now the only problem is that these tabs have a very small clearance for a metal panel. Our plastic is just a little bit too thick for that because when we push this through, there is the locking tab, but it can't snap back over the plastic because the plastic is just a little bit too thick. This is an easy thing for us to fix. Take your jeweler's file and along this lineup on the holes, place it right in the middle and just file a little bit of an incline right here. Like this. That's all you'll need because that's just enough for the tab to lock in. Do this on both sides of all four holes. And as you're filing, stop every once in a while and test fit the breaker to see if the snap lock goes in place. Nope, that one's going to need a little bit more yet. Now let's try it. Oh, that locked in perfect. See it? I'll fit the other three breakers in there now. Now comes the fun part. We're going to mount all eight of these banana jack binding posts into the box. When you do, be sure that you get the red terminal on the top. That will make a difference later. So we'll get that in place. Then put the retainer plastic. And then we have to have the washer. And then the last thing is a nut. Let me get it started. And let the washer center up on the plastic so it holds it in place. And we need a 5 16 inch wrench to tighten the nut up on the post. You can put it pretty tight because Remember, there's some nice plastic backing ribs back here that make this installation really work well. Now I have a nice black box, all full of pretty red and black banana plugs. And we're going to use that as a little holding jig, because the next thing we need to do is ten just the inside tabs on the back of each one of these breakers, because we're going to solder a wire to the inside of the tab only. And since clearances are going to be just a little bit tight in this box, we don't want to put the wire on the outside of it. We just want to put it on the inside of each tab. Now we're at the point where we're going to wire all this up. And this would be a good time to point out that you really only need to jump the common straight across because the common is going to have nothing to do with the breakers that we're going to put in. The reason we used dual binding post is if you're ever going to use this with the MTH digital command system, it's always a good idea to keep the common and the power wires closely spaced. So that's the reason why we're showing you to do this using these dual binding posts. To wire out the box, we need 16 gauge stranded wire. See if you can find some that has red and black color code on it because it just makes it easier for you. And you're going to cut four pieces of wire, black wire, that are two and one half inches long. There's a reason for that length, and we'll show you that in just a moment. When you have your pieces of wire cut, bend them into a U-shape like this. And after you've bent them all into a U-shape, strip about an eighth of an inch of insulation off the end of each wire on both ends, like that. After you strip the wires, tend the ends like this. 
You need three hands to do this, so let the solder be the third hand. Just leave it sitting on the counter and tin them like that. The next thing we're going to do is cut eight red wires, and these need to be three inches long. Strip and tin all eight red wires like you see right here. Now once you have that done, don't bend them into a hoop, just leave them straight. Next we're going to tin all of the binding posts inside the black box. You only need to tin just the part of the binding posts on the very tip. You don't need to put any solder on the threads at all. Give yourself some extra time to let the heat soak the post so that the solder wraps evenly like that. The black ground wires are going to be a little bit difficult to do, so you want to get them on a pair of long nose pliers like this because they go all the way to the bottom and solder them to each side where the black binding posts are. There we go. We're going to reach in with the pliers when we're done and bend this down out of the way like that. There. Do the same with the other three black wires until you have all eight of the ground posts attached. We've got all four of the black wires in and I've positioned them so that when the breaker panel is installed, the breaker will come right down in between here and will not touch or get near any of the wires. The next thing we need to do is solder all eight of these red wires onto the red post like this. Once again, be sure to get plenty of heat both on the wire and on the post because it takes a lot of the heat away because of the mass of metal on the post. As you solder them on, leave them sticking straight up out of the box like this. Put the circuit breakers positioned about like that. I put them on a roll of electrical tape and then bend the wires over and it's important that you solder these wires into the tab like you see here sideways. Don't bend them straight over and, and solder for the bottom. Remember to get plenty of heat on the tab and on the wire. Once again, remember to make this come in on the side like this and not in from the top like this. It's really easy to do it this way, but if you do it from the top down, when you place this in the bottom, there won't be enough clearance in the bottom of the box for the wires. There we go. Let's get the fourth one. Now, we've got to raise this up and comb each one of these wires through like that and then we'll turn it around and now we'll be ready to put these in the same way. Just bend a little hoop in it like that. Hold it and solder it in place. Here completes the last one and now we'll take these wires and give them a little help tucking in here because they're big 16 gauge wires. Let's go over here. Make sure they're, oh, they're all starting down fine. There we go. Put it on and there's our box. Now let's get the four screws in the top and we'll be done. There we go. Here's our last screw. And there's our completed box. Now, we'll set up a little test to show you how effectively this works. We have power applied to the track. We're up to uh, 20 volts and we're feeding it through our brand new little breaker box here. And I'm going to intentionally short out the track so we can watch the breaker trip. So we'll put the car there, bring it to a dead short. And there we have our circuit breaker popped. And the nice thing about this is, Unlike an inline glass fuse, there's nothing to replace here. You just wait for it to cool off and reset the breaker.